some comments for those who attend idolatrous worship. Wheresoever we perceive any people worship God truly after his word, there we may be certain the church of Christ to be, unto which we ought to associate ourselves and to desire with the prophet David to praise God in the midst of his church. But if we behold through the iniquity of the times congregations to be made with counterfeit religion otherwise than the word of God teaches, we ought then, if we are required to be companions thereof, to say again with David, I have hated the synagogue of the malignant and will not sit with the wicked. In the Revelation, the church of Ephesus is highly commended because she tried such as said they were apostles and were not indeed and therefore would not abide the company of them. Further, God commanded his people by the mouth of his prophet Amos that they should not seek Bethel neither into Gilgal where idolatry is used. Also, we must consider that our bodies are the temple of God and whosoever, as St. Paul teaches, profanes the temple of God, him the Lord will destroy. May we then take the temple of Christ and make it the member of an harlot? All strange religion and idolatry is counted as whoredom by the prophets and more detestable in the sight of God than the adultery of the body. Therefore the princes of the earth in the revelation of John are said to commit fornication when they are in love with false religion and follow the same. How then by any means may a Christian man think it tolerable to be present at the popish private mass which is the very profanation of the sacrament of the body and blood of Christ and at other idolatrous worshipings and rites which are not after the word of God but rather to the derogation thereof by setting man's traditions above God's precepts since God by his word judges all strange religion which is not according to his institution of fornication and idolatry. Some fondly, that is foolishly, think that the presence of the body is not material so that, that is, as long as, the heart does not consent to their wicked doings. But such persons little consider what St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, commanding them to glorify God in body as well as soul. Moreover, we can do no greater injury to the true church of Christ than to seem to have forsaken her and to disallow her by cleaving to her adversary, whereby it appears to others who are weak that we allow the same, and so, contrary to the word, give a great offense to the church of God and outwardly slander, as much as men may, the truth of Christ. Better it were for him to have a millstone tied about his neck and to be cast into the bottom of the sea. Such are traitors to the truth, like unto Judas, who with a kiss betrayed Christ. Quoted from John Philpot, Martyr for Christ, 1555. David knew not such shifts as worldly wise men imagine nowadays that they may keep their hearts pure and clean unto God howbeit their bodies dance with the devil. Not so, dear brethren, not so. The temple of God has nothing to do with idols. Quoted from John Knox, 1554. Neither can any good intentions or a loving heart to God's glory and zeal for him excuse or legitimate any worship he has not appointed. Take heed, therefore, of pleading good intentions or a good meaning in God's worship. Who seemed to be more excusable than Uzza, yet God struck him suddenly dead for that transgression? If people were truly sensible of this, they would not so revile and rage at a reformation as they do. What is more cheering and rejoicing to a godly man, to a true godly man, than to see the pure administration of all church worship? And on the other side, 
Nothing doth cut and pierce the heart of a carnal superstitious man more than to have his superstitions removed. Then they think all religion is removed with it. Well, howsoever thy intentions are good, as thou sayest, yet God accounts it so much worship done to devils. It is said of Jeroboam, his worship was to devils. Alas, did the people think so? Were not their intentions for the true God? But God calleth it worshipping of devils, for all false worship is brought in by the instigation of the devils. Quoted from Anthony Burgess, 1652. An uncomfortable question for comfortable Presbyterians. Are you dancing with the devil by being present at or participating in worship which the Lord has not commanded?